Welcome to Green Living. Now, have you ever seen something that looks really useful but you can't quite figure out what to do with it? Well, for me, it's that roll that holds the paper that we always throw away. I'm talking about the toilet paper rolls. Now, we've done some DIY projects with obvious recyclables before, like bottles, boxes, and paper. But this little guy over here often gets overlooked. So, I scoured the internet and dug up some upcycling projects for these little guys, and I'm going to share them with you in just a little while. But first, let's meet Johanna Garcia, who will tell us a story of a real girl who makes real food in a kitchen that she considers to be her toy. I'm Paolo Albrera, and this is Green Living. There's a special ring to the phrase home-cooked meals. It conjures up images of warmth, love, and comfort food. In a perfect world, we would all be enjoying delicious and nutritious home-cooked meals every time we sit down at a table. The ingredients would be both mouth-watering and additive-free. This is the world that organic chef Johanna Garcia subscribes to, one filled with slow-cooked meals prepared with organic ingredients and tons of love. I'm Johanna Garcia, founder of Real Girl Toy Kitchen. Real Girl Toy Kitchen is a line of prepared foods uh, that focuses on organic ingredients, premium ingredients. It's what I like to call real food. Real Girl Toy Kitchen is a food-based operation run by Johanna and her manager, focusing on the preparation, bottling, and delivery of artisanal foods painstakingly prepared with premium organic ingredients and an unwavering commitment to quality. It's called Real Girl Toy Kitchen it, because I named it after a blog I started late last year of the same name which basically chronicles my adventures or misadventures trying very hard to make real food in my toy kitchen. I focus on using organic ingredients whenever available. I really believe that this contributes a lot to the quality of the food you eat. I think that um, people are becoming more aware now of the importance of eating high quality organic food. I think organic food is just much better for you. Uh, there's a lot of evidence to support the fact that organic beef, for example, organic chicken, you do pay a little more, that's true, but I like to think that you're paying for what you don't get. You're not getting the pesticides, you're not getting growth hormones, you're not getting steroids, you're not getting antibiotics. With such fierce dedication to the use of premium ingredients and a visible passion for cooking, one might be surprised to learn that Real Girl Toy Kitchen is actually a result of shifting careers. I was head of communications for an international bank for about six years. I think um, where I was, I really loved my job. It was wonderful, but after six years, you you sort of think, for me at least, I had learned and I had done all I had done all the learning and all the growing I was going to do there and I wanted to move. You know, I just I wanted another challenge. And I think my passion for this, you know, it used to be just a hobby, but my passion for it was really growing. Um, so I guess it's just a matter of shifting passions. And her passion for cooking is evident. And she wants nothing but to share her passion and the fruits of her labor with everyone she meets. Food's always been a passion of mine um, and since I started living alone and working at a very busy job, I didn't really have the time to cook or even eat the food that I, you know, that I wanted to, to cook or make. So I just wanted to develop a line of food that made it easier for people to eat well um, and even to cook in their own kitchens, you know, to, to prepare what I like to call real food. Joanna's definition of real food is one defined by clean, organic ingredients, lovingly labored over for hours in her toy kitchen. This is how personalized the offerings of Real Girl Toy Kitchen are. I spend probably at least half a day, easily more, usually the mornings and the early afternoons prepping 
and making the, making the food, bottling it, and then after storing that. And then the turnover is fairly high. So normally every day we focus on one dish. Uh, today is chili day, for example, make a couple of batches of that. Tomorrow will be the pesto and the hummus. And then after that, it's, I guess, just um, people order and they either pick it up here or I deliver uh, within within a limited radius for free or, or a little bit farther for a nominal fee. Her toy kitchen may indeed be small, but her creations using it are limitless in their flavor profiles and versatility. Well, for my bottled products, I think one of my best sellers is the chili con carne. Um, it's just a nice comfort food, you know, eat it as is, eat it over rice, eat it. I also have some pasta sauces like my puttanesca and the pesto. And I have some spreads like the hummus and the black olive tapenade. But these are great to have in your kitchen because they're actually very versatile. The hummus, for example, the black olive tapenade, they're great spreads. But then, um, you know, you serve them with some crackers when you have some people over. But you know what? Put the tapenade over pasta, for example. You've got yourself a main course dish. Put the hummus in a sandwich instead of mayonnaise. It's healthier and it tastes amazing. Uh, I make a roasted pumpkin soup or I make a roasted tomato soup. And they're made with um, homemade organic chicken stock. So um, I think, you know, when you start with a good base, with soup, as, in, as is with life, you start with a good foundation, you're halfway there. Choosing organic ingredients is the foundation of her food, and she holds to this belief in the hopes that more and more people will choose to do the same. I try to use organic ingredients. I use organic vegetables. I always use organic chicken. I use um, organic beef, organic grass-fed beef. This makes a difference in the quality of the products you get. When I first moved back to Manila 10 years ago, organic produce was very difficult to find and it was also very expensive. It was, you know, I guess a little bit too esoteric and nobody really saw how important it was. More and more, when I talk to people, uh, you know, they're becoming more aware of how important it is to not have all these toxins in your body. I also think um, that it's becoming more affordable and that's a wonderful thing. That's, that's one of the things that I really tell people, you know, the more, the more people eat organic, the more people will grow it and the more affordable it becomes. Johanna feels that this is a growing industry, as shown by the increased interest on her online presence, as well as her growing crop of clientele. But every venture involves risk, especially ones that require putting all your eggs into one basket. You know, it, it's, there's a lot more risk, I guess. You know, there, you, you get a little more nervous about where your, your income is coming from, but I, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world because I haven't been this passionate about anything in a really long time. So I'm, you know, it's, it's uh, like I said, sleepless nights, but I'm loving every minute. And in the end, it is that passion that translates so well onto the final product. Prepared, cooked, bottled, and delivered with such personalization that the products of Real Girl Toy Kitchen are just icing on the cake. What matters most is the love that goes into each and every bite. I love food. I've always been passionate about food, about making really good food. And for me, uh, good food is love. I think, you know, I think it's real food. You make it with love and it shows. I think um, nurturing somebody, nourishing somebody is just an ultimate expression of love. And I think that sort of, I would like to think that's what comes through in my food. Just that my. My love, my love for food when I send the babies, my babies out into the world. I'm really hoping you like them because, you know, I do make them with so much love. The saying goes, you are what you eat. And while this applies to the deliciously healthy output of Joanna Garcia's kitchen, a more apt saying would be, you are what you cook, where there is no ingredient that stands out more in her cooking than that of love. And for this real girl in her toy kitchen, the rest, she says, may as well be a piece of cake. Welcome back to Green Living. Now today we're faced with the challenge of using toilet paper rolls instead of throwing them away. 
Now these are actually biodegradable and much less harmful to the environment than say other materials like plastic. But why throw something good away when you can actually make more use out of it? For starters, a toilet paper roll can do more of what it's designed to do, which is to hold things together. You can use it to organize your long cables and adapters. Voila! Now, for shorter cables, you can make an organizer using an old shoebox and a few other toilet paper rolls. You can also make a pen holder. Put seven rolls together and secure with tape. For the bottom, you can cut a used folder or box. Then again, secure it with tape. Then you cover the whole thing with craft paper or gift wrapper. So the next time you get a gift, don't rip up the wrapper. Keep it and use it for small projects. Toilet paper rolls also make a perfect seed starter pot. How do you do this? It's real simple. All you have to do is cut four one-inch slits on the end of a toilet paper tube, fold it onto each other, and simply secure with a little bit of tape. Fill it with soil, put some seeds in, and add more soil. A little water and sun should do the trick. When you've successfully grown your seed, you can just undo the bottom and put the whole thing in the soil. Once planted, the toilet paper rolls themselves will degrade, but not before you've given it a grand exit. When we come back, I'm going to show you more ways to upcycle these toilet paper rolls, but before that, let's get to know the art of Ferdinand Cacchio. The movement of leaves, the step of the feet, the playfulness of the child. All these lively moments are captured in a material so stiff by an artist so unique. I use construction materials in my artworks. It comes out naturally because I'm a civil engineer. And I know what's durable. I know what, what can withstand with nature. It can withstand fire, it can withstand anything. If you drop it, it won't, it won't be destroyed. I want my art to be remembered forever. Hi, I'm Ferdinand Cacnio, and I'm a visual artist. I don't have formal training in the arts. I, as far as I can remember, I learned how to draw before I learned how to write. It comes out naturally. I find it that since I took up psychology and I took up civil engineering, I have an advantage. I, I can think of I have this advantage that the merging of art and science. Another thing that, was, that makes me different is I can draw with my left and my right hand. So I can make sculptures using the left, using the right. Through his artworks, Kaknyo shows not only his unique use of metal, but reflects his love and respect for Mother Nature as well. Talking about my art is, my art is personal. Uh, I, be, I, I get my inspiration from nature. I'm a nature lover. I grew up in Malabon, and, and Malabon then was, was swamp, I don't know, fish ponds, so mangroves, so like this one, this, is, this is represents my playground. So we climb trees. Nature is our playground. And like now that we're surrounded with digital things, everything is it's a, it's different now. I want people to see that to reconnect with nature. And that, that childhood experience made me realize that we have, I love nature, so we have to preserve nature. I want to go back to that kind of nature. The message of my art is, we have to reconnect with nature. God created nature. And we have to connect, reconnect with greatness. We have to preserve, because we have, only have one earth. My first exhibit in Gallery Astra was in 2010. And that's when I presented, in its full form, my Connection Reconnection series. I call it Connecting with Greatness. One of the most significant reaction, uh, reactions that I got was, it looks like a gintong gubat. So this particular sculpture is there. I call this balance. It has layers of in in interpretation. This brought me back when I was a child. The mangroves as our playground. This is Taguan. Look, you can see the movement. Oh. Nature is our playground, Taguan. 
this is Greater Heights Together. As you can see, the, I made the people holding hands together to show teamwork. And look at the proportion. They're so small compared to the trees. It signifies how the smallness, our smallness, as compared to the greatness of nature. My most significant artwork, I, I, I will say, is the public art in Global City. What makes it so special is because it's a public art and it's accessible to everybody. Uh, the inspiration is Malabon. I grew up in Malabon and the Cacnos uh, were, were fishermen. So that's the background of it. But I make it in such a way that it's connected with nature. As you can see, the, the, two, the two fishermen are looking up, praying, giving thanks to the Lord Almighty. But everything that we have here is from God. But it's not only through his art where Cacnio shows his love for nature. His own house is a testament that he practices what he preaches. Our home is eco-friendly. The architect who did this, uh, the late uh, Dean Honrado Fernandez, he made it in such a way, this home, that it's, it doesn't need uh, lighting and cooling. It employs cross-ventilation and it's what we call maaliwalas, maliwanag. Capturing movement and creating an illusion of lightness are Kaknyo's trademarks as an artist. Before I joined the art scene, I noticed that uh, the works of other sculptors are kind of stiff, no movement, and it's like posed. So I, I thought about if I want to be a sculptor, I'll show them how you can incorporate movement. I was a dancer before, and I can see it in my mind what a sculptor should look like. It should allow it to breathe, it should be alive. There should be an illusion of movement. So, and I think I was successful in that way that I showed them how is it done. Uh, this is my first sculpture, no? this is my first dance sculpture. I did it in 2005. It, it's balance, doesn't need a stand. Engineering marvel. <laughs> and this one I did uh, for, for UP. It's my female oblation. I call it up to you. There's an illusion of lightness, although the, the material is hard and heavy. This is my flamenco dancer. Dr. Alice Guillermo wrote that what made me different from other sculptors is that I, I employ crumpling of metal. I, I, know, I grind and polish my my welded sculpture that you cannot see the seam. At present, I'm, doing a, uh, I'm continuing doing trees in various forms and sizes. And now I'm into animals. They were telling me that doing horses is the most difficult thing to do. And I, want, I always want to challenge myself. Okay, I'm a multimedia artist. Aside from doing sculptures, I, I also do graphic design and painting. As a painter, I incorporate all movement in my paintings. One thing I can say as a painter, I know when to stop. Every art has a story. For Kaknyo, his art is an extension of himself. Each sculpture is a page from his visual diary. Before I do a collection, I plan first and make a concept. What, what would be my vision for that collection? What would be my, my message for that collection? And as this is what I call visual diary or sapatusin. Each, each, uh, each culture has a story. I decided to create a shoe collection because of my love to my wife. My, my diary. I enjoy while doing this. It makes me feel young again. I want my art to be inspirational. I want my art to be remembered as something that has positive messages.
Now I've already shown you a few different ways to upcycle those toilet paper rolls and now comes even more fun. If you collect rings or like to make your own jewelry, you might want to consider this, a display box. Cover it with felt, put the toilet rolls in a box, and voila! A jewelry display box for your most prized possessions. And the best part is, it's free. Now you can also use toilet paper rolls to make napkin rings. Simply cut a one and a half inch section of the tube, cover with paper, and there you have it. Now if you've ever been worried about using toilet paper tubes that have been in the bathroom for a while, there's actually nothing stopping you from taking the tube out of the tissue paper before you put it in the bathroom. But the most interesting use of these toilet paper tubes that I've seen is to make a little gift box and it doesn't even involve any cutting. Simply fold in the corners like so and you end up with something like this. You can use more of that paper or some ribbon to make it look extra special. Well, you've seen how we've upcycled the humble toilet paper roll into a cable organizer, a pen holder, a seed starter pot, a jewelry display box, some napkin rings, and pillow boxes. People even use these tubes to make toys for their kids. They make a great pair of binoculars, or a puppet, or even the beginnings of a train. What would you do with a toilet paper tube? Use some creativity and tell us all about it on our Facebook page, or tweet us, or comment on www.greenliving-tv.com. Well, I'll see you guys next week, right here on Green Living. And that's to hold things together. For and that's to hold things together. I think I'm doing that. You just need an old shoe box and a few other toilet paper rolls to make. <laughs> Using toilet paper rolls without and without throwing them away, but not before you've given it a grand exit. Okay, okay my kids, get it Tape that up. Tapos, roll it more. Tapos, Tape. A jewel pen holder. <laughs>